Hello YouTube and welcome to the start of my big board series where I cover my top 80 or so prospects but we're going to go through them rapid fire and we're going to go by position and it's going to be kind of like a big board by position. So number one we have Lamelo Ball. We know him as a top playmaker. He's a massive size of 6'7", 190. I mean that's great for a point guard. He's pretty young. He's going to be 19 years in like three or four months at the time of the draft. Was a really good playmaker, really good rebounder. Issues with his defense. And we pretty much all know about LaMelo Ball. He's probably going to end up going number one overall. Number two, I'm going to put Tyrese Halliburton here just because he's a little bit more substantial than number three. He's got a little bit more going on with his game. He's got the box plus minus. He has the defensive box plus minus, which is one of my... I like box plus minus a whole lot. He wasn't a great scorer, but he got a lot of assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. I mean, he covered it all pretty much. Had a good assist to usage ratio over at Iowa State. He had a small, he had a less competition than some other players, but he's a sophomore at he's gonna be like 20 and like nine or 10 months old at the time of the draft. And I mean, he can be a great fit on some good teams. He's just a solid overall player at six five. I mean. That's going to be a pretty good point guard for the future. Moving on to Killian Hayes. Some people say he's a better playmaker than that guy, LaMelo Ball. And he could be a better scorer as well. I think there's really a lot of question marks about him. At 11.5 points and 5.5 and assists, he didn't really do a whole lot with his time in Germany. With the rat, that team, I can't pronounce that. 6'5", He also has that NBA size he's that great nba size he's a pretty efficient scorer as well and apparently he's gonna be pretty good at the next level but there's a lot of question marks surrounding him and a lot less surrounding tyrese halliburton and number four we have the super young 19 year old kyra lewis jr he's fast i mean 6'3 165 he's pretty small he's from alabama he's already a sophomore at 19 years old which is pretty weird he got a lot of minutes, and he averaged 18 and a half points, five rebounds, five assists, which is pretty good for a point guard, sophomore at that, and how young he is. Uh, he did a pretty good job at Alabama. We do have to point out that there's a little bit less competition there than there might be at other schools, but he's just fast, and he's going to translate well to the NBA. He's another just pretty much potential pick. Next, Tyrell Terry. 6'1", 160. He's even smaller than Kyra Lewis. But when I looked him up earlier to put him in that thumbnail, I saw a lot of things about NBA teams reaching out to this guy, and I think he's going to be very good at the next level. He can drive. He can shoot. He can shoot free throws. He can defend. He, I think he's got it all. I think he's a perfect player for the NBA. Even though he isn't a great playmaker, he will do well next to another playmaker in the NBA. I mean, you find playmakers at every position. Your playmaker doesn't definitively have to be a point guard like it might have done in the past. And Tyrell Terry will definitely benefit from that aspect of the current day NBA landscape. Next up, we have Nico Mannion. It's 6'3", 180. People really liked him coming into this draft. He's usually top 10. And then didn't have a great season at Arizona. 14 and 5 assists. He wasn't that bad. I mean, it's just we, we expected to see a lot more out of him. I mean, Arizona receiving a lot of hits. Not really a whole lot else going on with that team other than Josh Green. And just none of his advanced stats hold up that well. Mainly, you're going to be drafting off of what he did at Pinnacle Peak. Or actually, it's just called Pinnacle. I'm sorry. And what he did in high school and what he did against all those Arizona basketball players. Uh, Marcus Howard is the next one up. I mainly put him here because he's just such a phenomenal scorer. You cannot underrate that. In 5'11", 175, he's pretty much the smallest player here. He's a senior out of Marquette. Averaged 28 points per game. I mean, you're drafting him as a scorer and as a shooter. I don't really have a whole lot else to say about him. 85% from free throw, he's going to be a good shooter. <laughs> he's a scorer, and some teams need scoring off their bench. So, Next up is Malachi Flynn out of San Diego State at 6'1", 185. This guy's a monster as a three-point shooter. 
as a slasher, as a defender. He's got it all. Even at 22 years old, I think he is better than some of these other point guards just because he gets it all done and he can play for a good team, I think. I think he'll end up on a good team and then contribute right away and to the rotation. Next up is Theo Maladin out of France. He's 6'4", 175. And, oh, I forgot to say, Cole Anthony and that guy RJ Hampton is not going to be on here. I classified them as shooting guards, so if you were looking for them, they are on the other, the next video, which will be the shooting guards. And that's why they're not here. They're not being ranked lower than some of these guys. So, anyways... Theo Maldon, he did not have a great season. He's just a pretty young player. He's shown some flashes in the past. We've liked him a lot more than this, but he's dropped down these boards quite a bit. I think he was usually like a lottery pick coming into this year, and now he's just dropped down to probably 20s, maybe in 30s. Probably He's probably going to end up 20 to 30. And, I mean, he's just, he's just a point guard pretty much. There isn't much to say about him at this point. Devin Dotson, uh, he's that defensive point guard out of Kansas, 6'2", 180. He can really guard three positions, surprisingly. We'll see how that translates to the NBA level. I mean, there are a lot of taller small forwards and shooting guards in this league, taller wings, I should just say. Uh, he wasn't a great three-point shooter. He did have a good free throw percentage. He's mainly getting drafted because of his defense, and yeah, <laughs> that's why you're drafting Devin Dotson is you want a defender. He's a great defender. On the opposite side of the ball, we have Peyton Pritchard at 6'2", 190. He's a great scorer. I ranked him a bit above the next great scorer in Cassius Winston. 41.5% from three. He did a great job over there at Oregon. An 82% free throw shooter. He did a good job at that. Projected NBA three-point percentage at 38%. I don't know how much that's actually worth, but, you know, there it is. He is efficient shooter, and he had a high box plus minus because he was also a solid defender. I don't know how much that was a product of the Oregon scheme or if he is actually a good defender. Next up is Cassius Winston out of Michigan. This dude's been in college forever. I mean, he did a good job in his final season. I think it was worse than his junior season, though. So, I mean, maybe he should have committed to the draft before this year. 18.5 points and 6 assists. He's a solid defender and a good scorer. And he's a good 3-point shooter and a good free throw shooter. So that means his NBA 3-point percentage should be pretty good. He had a high usage rate. It was just He's just pretty much solid overall point guard that you can take in the second round. Here's the exact opposite. That's Abdullah Ndoye. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's all in the eye test. At 6'6", 205, he's a pretty good big point guard. I didn't say good, pretty big point guard. And uh, it, it's just about how he's going to do at the next level and who he's playing for. I mean, there's literally one game entered in here on Tankathon. Let's not read too much into this. But from the tapes we've seen, he's a pretty good player, maybe. I like him better than the next guy, Trey Jones. You guys probably like Trey Jones a whole lot, Duke fans. Six two and a half, one eighty five. I just don't see anything that stands about out about his game. I don't think he did a whole lot of Duke. I don't think he deserves to be a first round pick. I think he should be a second round pick. I see he does have the defensive impacts, but I, I just don't see a whole lot out of this guy considering he's twenty. He's gonna be a twenty one years old at the time of the draft. I mean, I just I can't justify putting him much higher than this considering. How many other players have so many good aspects of their game at this point guard position? How loaded this point guard class is? Next up is Grand Trilla out of Charleston. A lot of guys are really high on him, and we know this dude's going to instantly come in and contribute for a team. I mean, he has this vibe around him that he's going to be very good as soon as he comes out of the draft. Well, I mean, very good relative to his draft position. 22 points, 4 assists, three, 5 rebounds. He is a guy who just attacks the rim and just gets free buckets. We'll see how that translates to the NBA. He's also a solid defender. He had a great PER, and he's an extremely efficient shooter. Not an insanely good three-point shooter. Had a low three-point rate, but we'll see how that translates as well. We really don't know. 
I mean, I scroll down. There's one singular game where he didn't score in double digits this season. He is a pretty good scorer over there at Charleston. Skyler Mays, I'm going to move him over to point guard for this. 6'4", 205. He's coming out of LSU. And this dude's the solid shooting guard, point guard type player. He's uh, just he's just a solid point guard. I mean, teams need point guards, and he's there. He is pretty good offensively, good offensive win shares, good offensive rating, but not a great defender. Uh, he's okay, three-point shooter, pretty good efficiency as well. Very good free throw shooter. 44% free throw rate is also very good. I mean, he's a pretty good slasher. And, uh, yeah, he's just a point guard pretty much. Next up, we have Miles Powell. He's going to be <laughs> almost 23 and a half years old at the time of the draft, averaging 21 points per game over there at Seton Hall. I mean, he's just, <laughs> he shot a lot of shots, and he missed a lot of shots as well, shooting 17 and a half field goals a game, only getting 21 points. He's inefficient, but we can see he can score at times. <laughs> and he pretty much only had. What? <laughs> he pretty much only had two games. No, he pretty much only had one game where he scored in sing single digits last season. And, I mean, he's a bit small at 6'2", 195. But this season's going to be pretty... He's, he's, a, he's a player. He could be a player. Anyway, Ashton Higgins is going to stick with, with the lackluster point guards. He's a sophomore out of Kentucky at 6'3", 200. There's not, there's not, there's not many positives. He's a pretty good playmaker. Had a good assist to usage ratio. Got a few steals. He's an okay defender and playmaker. I guess he might get a, get some minutes at some point in his career. Finally, a VM Mater out of a pole, Tel Aviv, in Israel. I probably messed up that name. We also don't have games for him here. But, I mean, he, he's, I, I don't really remember much about him. I mean, there's no one else watching this video at this point, right? Uh, he, he's a point guard, and he ended up in my, like, top 80 players. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching the video for anyone who's still here. I mean, I see 2% of my viewers are subscribed, so maybe consider subscribing if you're watching a lot of my videos. Anyways, I'll see you later. Bye.